Hi everyone and welcome back to my home. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you around our entrance hall and our TV room. So come and follow me and I'll show you around. The first thing that I really focused my energy on in this room was the staircase design. The developer that I bought it from um, had quite a strong look and it really wasn't what I wanted. It was much more angular. Um, they tend to block in underneath the staircase and I wanted to keep it as light and airy as possible. So I went for this staircase that doesn't touch the walls and it allows all the light to pour down from the skylight down the walls. I felt like having this soft curve here was just much more elegant. And then I remember having extensive discussions with the um, staircase manufacturer. They just were gonna end the balustrade here and I really wanted it to curve round and go down to the bottom step. That was like quite a lot of discussions about that because I could find like quite often as a designer and as a homeowner, if you're asking someone to do something they don't normally do, you can quite often meet a bit of resistance, but I'm so glad that I persevered with it because this is one of my favorite aspects and design features in the house. I sourced these urns that are antiques in Petworth and it's got a huge amount of antique shops. So I sourced these urns um, they were originally in the garden of an old house and then I had these faux orchids um, made to fit the scale of the space. They're absolutely huge um, and they sit in there and sometimes I change them up. I might have um, a display of like twigs or, you know, ferns could look, ooh, ferns could look quite nice. But I love how that, that addition of the urn makes this feel a bit more sophisticated to me and I didn't want it to all just be new furniture. I wanted to mix in and um, some old pieces as well. And then I've decorated the tabletop with piles of coffee table books. I've got so many coffee table books and I've gone for, and people are gonna slate me for this, but I've gone for all black and white neutral books here because I wanted the focus not to be on the books and if they were really colorful, that would detract from the antique hand. So as you walk in, this is the first thing you see and I wanted all the focus to be on that. Whenever I'm designing an entrance hall for a client or for myself, I always know that as you walk in, you need a piece of furniture to hide your post and shoes, whatever it is that you're gonna dump in the entrance hall as you walk in. If you want it to be tidy, you need somewhere to hide it all. So I've got this sideboard. It's originally from Bernhardt and I sourced it through Lux Deco. And I love this starburst design in the Mother of Pearl. I think it's so pretty. Um, the one thing I would say, a lot of people have asked me about this piece of furniture and it has a high gloss top and it isn't that practical, it scratches really easily. Um, but if you're okay with that, it's absolutely fine. And I've just hidden the worst scratches with this tray. So I love it and I think it's a really nice piece of furniture and I'll show you some of my hidden junk in here. This actually, we have a little um, cloak room so we keep all our shoes in there. But this is all my um, DIY, I've got like PPE there, um, light bulbs, and then this is probably the strangest thing you wouldn't expect this, but this is our DIY drawer of my husband when he's very, very occasionally feeling handy and I trust him enough to put up a picture or something. <laughs> so that's all hidden there, but you can never have too much storage. I've got this custom sofa that I had made from Officina Inglesa and I upholstered this in a Johnston's of Elgin cashmere which was kind of an experiment because, you know, if I'm gonna do something that I'm not sure how practical it's gonna be, I'd rather do it in my own home first and test it before I give it to a client. Um, and a lot of people said to me, don't do a cashmere sofa, it, it won't wear well. But we've had this for about, I don't know, six months. And my kids chuck their school bags on it, they jump on it, you know, it gets a lot of wear and tear and so far so good it's wearing really nicely and it just feels so soft and has a beautiful um, sheen to it as well when it catches the light. This painting is one of my favourite paintings and I've got, it's like a funny story how we got this. It used to belong to my in-laws. They had a lovely townhouse in Edinburgh and um, they sold it around the same time that we were moving to this place. And um, my husband said to them, oh, that would make the perfect housewarming gift. So his dad um, readily gave it to him, it was like super generous. And um, his mum really didn't want to give it to us because she loves it and we get on really well with her. But 
it's kind of a running joke that every time she comes in, she's like, oh, you still got my painting. Um, but I think they kind of like the fact that they know how much we love it and that it's pride of place as you walk in. If you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I love petrified um, lugs. And I bought this huge consignment of petrified lugs when I was in Cornwall. I just happened to come across this supplier um, that had loads of petrified lugs in this like off the track place. I remember driving there with my sister, we were going on a girl's holiday and we both had our dogs in the car and I found this place that had petrified logs and I just um, was gonna buy one or two for my house. We had a small house in London. And then the guy told me that he was shutting down his business and would I like to buy his entire consignment of logs? And I think there was like 37. Um, so we lived in a muse house at the time and I didn't tell my husband, but I ended up having a truck delivered of 37 petrified logs and they weigh so much. I think this one probably weighs about 75 kilograms. You can't transport it in a car. I once tried to move one in the back of my car and it almost went through the boot. Um, they're absolutely so heavy. I mean, I can't even move this one. I can just about move it. Um, but they're so beautiful. And again, I love that, how it adds like a slightly more rustic, more um, laid back feel to this space. It's not as formal as the sofa, um, but I think it combines really well. And I just love all the colors and the pattern are in this. For those who don't know, explain what you mean by petrified. Petrified. It's not that it's been scared, it's that it's literally been fossilised. So I think these are about 40 million years old. Um, and I think a lot of them come from Indonesia. And if, I, if I'm correct, I think that they, um, they're in the rice paddy fields. And as they're churning up and harvesting the rice, um, a lot of these are sort of, they come up to the surface and they're a bit of a hindrance for the farmers there because they can't farm the land as effectively so they get removed um, and then this will be cut and this one is completely polished so they've polished um, the outside and the top sometimes you get ones that um, are in their raw form around the side and just the top has been polished um, and then they've just put some felt underneath but effectively it's just fossilized wood but it's, it becomes stone through that process. Two years ago, we redesigned all the lighting in our home with John Cullen, and it made such a huge difference. Although we didn't do a complete redesign because we didn't want to lift up flooring and we didn't want to open up walls, we were able to make such a big difference just in terms of where they position the actual fittings, the fittings that they used, the color that it gives, and how it highlights all the objects. And I learned so much through that process about how to do good lighting design. I think so many people make the mistake of creating a grid on their ceiling and not thinking about where the light is gonna shine. Whereas what John Cullen do is they think about what is on the wall and what do they want to highlight? What pieces of furniture in the room do they want to highlight? And what's the mood they want to create? I think the biggest success with that lighting redesign that we did was this staircase because it's the main design feature as you walk into the house, it's what you really see and there was absolutely no lighting on it. In an ideal world, what we should have done originally would have been have spotlights under the staircase coming from the floor, and that would have lit the underside of the staircase really dramatically, but we couldn't do that. We already had the floor in place, and I wasn't about to rip it up. So what the design team at John Cullen came up with was the idea of running an LED strip that's hidden around the back of the staircase. And at night time, when you put it on the mood setting, it just gives this lovely soft glow. And as you walk in, it really draws your eye to the staircase and makes the absolute most of it. So it, wait, it made such a big difference. One of the things I wanted to do um, when I was designing this space was just make it as light as possible. So this mirror, which is, I think at the time it was the biggest mirror Stuart Fox had ever done, is the same kind of design, um, but it's applied directly onto the wall. It's all Eglamise mirror, um, and it bounces all the light down into the um, hallway and makes it as bright as possible. So I really love this. And I also love the fact that because it's not clear mirror, um, my son in particular loves like touching it with his fingers. It's always got fingerprints on it, but you can't really tell because the Eglamise has so much pattern on it. It kind of like hides all the finger marks. So it's practical as well. A lot of you guys ask me um, what this floor is. It's a marble. It's from Italy and it's called Chino Fiorito. I'll put that on screen. Um, but it's just a really nice light colored stone. And again, I wanted to bounce the light. So I went for a polish finish. Um, which I think works really well in this space. I personally prefer honed stone. I think it looks a little bit more 
sophisticated, but for this space, polished was the right way to go because I wanted it to be as bright as possible and the light reflects and bounces off of it. One of the other changes that I've made in this entrance hall over the years, now that we've lived here for 10 years, I've kind of been tweaking things as I've been going along. And we changed this light fixture about a year ago. Previously, we had quite a glitzy chandelier and it just didn't really fit our aesthetic anymore. My husband really didn't like it, had a lot of crystals. And I just absolutely love lanterns. I feel like they're so classic and timeless. And I think this one works so well here because it's really simple and clean lines. And where we have this balustrade that runs the whole way across the entrance hall, it needed something very simple that wasn't competing with the balustrade and didn't make the space feel too busy. So I found this one in France and it's absolutely massive. I think it's like 1.5 meters tall. Um, and I just love the um, bronze finish as well. I think it works really well with all the other finishes in the room and it feels a lot more classical now. The most shocking thing about this space is the fact that I've got some colour. <laughs> this was um, an orchid that someone sent me a few weeks ago and I think it's absolutely beautiful. But I love putting real flowers or plants on this chest of drawers. And kind of the same with the urns downstairs. I knew that I wanted to have an antique here so that we were mixing up the styles again. And I found this place, um, I found this piece also in Petworth incredible value for money i can't remember the price but you wouldn't be able to get something made today at the same price this is a burr walnut so it's got this beautiful pattern to all the wood and i've just added a little tassel in the same color of blue as the bench and the piece of art so you're kind of bringing that color across and then i've dressed this with a tray this one's from lux deco it's a really nice woven leather these are some um, agate balls, crystal balls, um, that we found from a supplier a few years ago. So beautiful. Another Joe Malone candle. And this is a Porta Romana lamp. This one's based on, I don't know whether it's called a perfume bottle or it's just inspired by an old perfume bottle, but it's probably my favorite design that they've done. I love the mixture of the glass with the metal um, collar at the top of the lamp. And then this is yet another Stuart Fox mirror. This is not an ad for Stuart Fox, by the way. I just love his pieces. And I feel like because this is an open plan space in the same way that I have um, three pieces of art from the same artist, it felt like if I was gonna put a mirror here, it had to be a glamise. Because one thing I would say is if you're mixing different types of mirror in the same room, it will make one mirror look dirty and it just, it won't flow. So I went for another glamise mirror, but did a different frame on this one. Next, I wanted to show you around our TV room. It's the coziest room in the house and where we love to spend time as a family watching movies at night. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite things in this room. When I'm in here, I can just feel like the world feels like a million miles away and you just feel in this really cozy space where you can sit and read a book or just immerse yourself in a movie. This is probably my favorite chair to relax in in the whole house. It's a swivel chair, which I really love. And it works so well in here because you can swivel to the TV or to the sofa and chat to other people. But my personal favorite thing is I'll quite often sit here, put my feet up on this window ledge and the sun shines in um, during the middle of the day and you can just sit in the sunshine reading a book and it just feels so relaxing. This table is another mother of pearl table. Um, and I've dressed it, these are just a couple of branches from the garden of a silver birch in a nice um, vase. And again, I think if you watch the living room video that I did last week, I speak about how when I'm arranging accessories, I love to cluster them in a group of three with varying heights and it just makes it feel a lot more unified. So it works really well with the colors of the photo frame. And then I've just got an open book. This is a life less ordinary interiors and inspirations if you love interiors books i really recommend this it was bought for me by um, two of my designers brett and anthony and it's one of my most treasured books that i've got i find it so inspiring so um, a life less ordinary if you're looking for another book with the lighting in this room i really wanted to have it low level lighting so i've gone for three of the same table lamps these really oversized table lamps and it's quite unusual for us, or it's an unusual thing for me to do to have three of the same lamp. But in here, it felt like there was such a prominent design feature that if I had two really oversized chunky lamps and then a skinny lamp over there, it would feel a bit unbalanced. And I just love the light that these give out. They're so cozy and warm and they work really well on these oversized side tables that I had made. 
With these tables, I love mixing in different materials. And at the time, this was a completely different stain than anything I'd done. It's kind of got like a white wash over a dark gray oak. Um, and I feel like it looks very rustic. And when we were um, redoing this room, we were going through a phase of really wanting to live in the Cotswolds. So we kind of tried to bring the Cotswolds to Surrey. Um, and then just to add a different texture on the table, I used a Samuel and Sons trim which normally we would just use on like a curtain or maybe a cushion and decided to put it on this part of the table and I feel like that works really nicely and I haven't actually seen that done before but it's something that I would definitely do again. This coffee table I found in Paris and what I loved about it was the fact that it has this brushed finish so it's like an open grain oak and it feels sort of very rustic and farmhouse and I love the fact that the more beaten up it gets the better it looks. And then underneath I have, it has another shelf where you can put books. And I remember at the beginning of um, 2020, when we all went into lockdown, I had this really grand idea that I was gonna buy all these albums and I bought these online, they're really beautiful. I'll try and find out where I got them from and share that with you guys. Um, and I was gonna do an album of photos for every year that my husband and I have been together and pictures of our kids and happy memories because I've got about 50,000 photos on my camera and I tried like three or four times um, to download them and my phone kept crashing, the app kept crashing, so I still haven't managed to find time to do them, but maybe when I'm an old granny, I'll get around to it. This sofa was the first sofa that my husband and I ever bought. We got it back in, I think, 2006, 2007. So it's about 15 years old and it has gone through so much. We've had parties, we had a spaniel for 10 years that used to jump all over it, our kids jump all over it, and it's literally been indestructible. And I remember when I was designing this room, um, I had a couple of my designers look at what I was putting together and they said, why don't you recover this sofa so that it works better with the colours in the room? And probably you're looking at it being like, it works fine, but it, it's slightly warmer than the colour that I would ideally want. It's not quite the same colour as the armchairs or the curtain or the blinds. Um, but how I made it work was um, bringing in the other colours in the room through the cushions. And I'm so glad that I didn't change it because it's so nice to look at it and it's got so many memories, this sofa, but also I just didn't want to be wasteful. Even though it's not the perfect fabric of what I would have picked, I've managed to make it work perfectly fine by accessorising with some cushions. So I love this sofa. This is probably, if I'm not sat in that chair um, and I'm really tired, you'll find me lying down on the sofa, probably asleep because I can't stay awake watching a movie, but this is literally the world's most comfortable sofa. I had these footstools added as a later addition because it kind of felt like this space was quite empty and we found that because this room's so cosy people kind of naturally get drawn here if we're having a party everyone always ends up in this room and they work really well in here because the TV is behind me and I didn't want to have any seating that would interrupt the view of that but people will sit on them or they double up as footstools and what I really love about them is the oval shape because I'd only ever seen um, square stools before and I felt like the oval shape was a lot more inviting. On the coffee table, um, you can clearly see that I love accessories and more is more in my opinion. I've got these two huge oversized stone bowls which I really love because they add another texture and they look very rustic as well. Then I've got one of my favourite books and again you can see like the bowls go on the diagonal so here it felt natural that the book should go on the diagonal and although this room hasn't got a lot of colour I love having um, natural green planting in here so to emphasise that green planting I've just got to open on a book um, with some greenery in there as well and then a box to hide in my remotes and um, coasters another Jo Malone candle and a little succulent on this wall, because it's opposite the windows, I really didn't want to put another piece of art. I wanted to do some mirrors to reflect all the natural light that was coming in. And to do something different, I decided to copy the idea of the sash window with this panel design, and it's distressed along where all the joins meet, so that it kind of mirrored the look of the windows that we have on that wall. And then I went for an arch design at the top, just so it kind of softened it a little bit and reflected some of the curves that I've got elsewhere in the room, like the side tables and the lamps. And I'm so happy how it worked out because I love looking into the mirrors and seeing the reflection of the lavender and all the beautiful trees outside. For the TV unit, we knew we wanted to have a huge TV in here and I've framed it with this 
TV joinery unit that we had made custom. Um, I didn't want to have too much distraction from the TV, so for all the lighting, we just put an LED strip that shines down the back of the unit, rather than spotlights that would highlight each individual um, accessory, which I feel like would be quite a lot to be going on while you're watching a movie. This kind of just gives you some nice background lighting and shows off all the accessories in a more subtle way. The finish is another um, finish that I developed with one of our joinery firms and it's a grey oak stain with a lime wash on top. Um, I love how it worked out and again it has that kind of like mountain rustic vibe. Some of the accessories um, that I've got in here, I would say all of this colour palette of the accessories is very much inspired by nature. It's very muted, very soft, lots of natural textures in here. Um, this is a good example of how we've combined or how I've combined different objects and I'd say when you're accessorising or styling your own home and your own shelves, don't be scared to you know, cluster unusual objects together and look around your home at what things might combine nicely. So here I've got an Andrew Martin coffee table book. This is a piece of coral um, that I've had for a long time at the back and, and I put it in this glass box which I feel like really elevates it and makes it feel even more special. And then just a small marble disc on a stand which is one of our go-to pieces. This is a beautiful um, crystal um, from Rab Labs in New York and I feel like that works really nicely because it gives it a lot of height but it's not very wide and then just to finish it off I've got this crystal and lastly a little tassel um, and I think the tassel works so nicely draped over the book and I think having all those objects so they kind of like meander gives it a lot of depth to the shelf rather than just having one object but that said, you wouldn't want to have something that was that busy in every single shelf. So underneath, I've just got a really simple oversized glass vase. Um, this one's got a lovely sandblasted finish, so it feels very muted. And I love how that fills the entire shelf. And then up here, this was quite a difficult shelf to dress. You don't want to have them too busy and long shelves are much more difficult to style than small shelves. Um, but here I've done varying different types of vases. This is a glass one and I have these little um, seed pods that sort of float down out of it and I love how they kind of fan out. And another stone pot. This is a crackle glaze. I love crackle glaze finishes. And then lastly a tall faux char green vase. And all of these objects I've found and collected over the years but there's so many amazing places that you can find objects like this. I often find incredible stuff on eBay, the high street has lots of good options and I think it's all about mixing different textures, different colours and grouping objects together to create clusters makes things look a lot more special. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you really enjoyed it. I've loved showing you around my entrance hall and TV room. Stay tuned because we're going to be showing you lots more videos of all the areas of our house. I'm going to do a full tour, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out.